Welcome to Untold Physio Stories, a podcast that informs and educates by connecting you to rehab industry leaders who share their candid successes and failures in business and practice. This episode of Untold Physio Stories is sponsored by Edge Mobility System. Edge Mobility System is your online site for everything a PT, OT, DC, MT, ATC, or fitness pro would need. Get certified in blood flow restriction therapy or training online. Check out our full modern manual therapy seminars, ISTM toolkit, edge suspension trainer, portable tables, and more. Untold Physio Stories listeners can save 10% by going to edgemobsys.com. That's E-D-G-E-M-O-B-S-Y-S dot com slash untold to save 10% off their first purchase. Edge Health and Tech Solutions. We do websites that work for you and give you an edge over the competition. Did you know that you have less than 10 seconds to capture someone's interest in your website before they click away? How about the fact that most people are accessing your website from their phone? Save thousands and get a fully mobile, appealing, and SEO-optimized website linked to your social media, email list, and Google My Business. All for one low price and no monthly fees. Why not keep doing what you do best in your business and allow us to handle the tech side? Let's get started. Find us at edgehealthandtech.com. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories. I'm your host, Dr. E, with Modern Manual Therapy, the eclectic approach and edge mobility system, and my co-host today is... Uh, Dr. Andrew Rothschild, Modern Patient Education, Modern Rehab Mastery. How's it going, Andrew? That's going good, Erson. How are you doing? Good. You ready for the holiday? Uh, As ready as we're going to be for 2020, yeah. I know, yeah. Our Thanksgiving is pretty much canceled. You know, we can have... We can have... Uh, up to 10 people in the house, which is kind of hard with our family, oh, right. being eight people. <laughs> you, you, have to, so, you have to kick out one kid. Right. Yeah, I know. The kids can just play outside. Um, so yeah, I have an interesting story. Uh, a patient who basically came to me um, several times over the course of a year for headaches and neck pain. So initially, it seemed like a typical kind of Cervicogenic, cervicogenic headache presentation, um, left-sided neck pain, like upper cervical and left-sided cervical pain. Um, she had some headaches and, you know, after, after getting rid of the neck pain, which um, some repeated motions, it went away for a little bit. And then it kind of came back, say a month later. So after that, the repeated motions weren't really, bo- weren't really helping. And also she didn't really have the concurrent neck pain. And she started noticing some like kind of visual disturbances. So the the best way she could describe it was kind of like flashing in her, in her eyes. So she went to a local optometrist, I want to say first, and they diagnosed her with optical migraines. So they noticed that she had, um, you know, previously perfect vision. She's always had uh, better than perfect vision her entire life. And, um, they said, you know, it's kind of common, even if you you had perfect vision, to to have some deficits in your in your early forties, and um, everyone should kind of get their eyes checked out again. So she waited for prescription glasses, and that seemed to fix things um, for maybe about six or seven months. Then um, six or seven months later, started getting the headaches again, some neck pain. Um, tried to clear the neck. Some retractions and upper cervical work seemed to help, but not really. Um, she kind of became concerned also because she started to have like a blurred vision and, and, and loss of visual fields, which she noted because she's also a healthcare practitioner. Ah. So, you know, I said, I don't think this is your neck considering it was something about your eyes last time. Um, instead of going to, um, you know, we, we asked around to, to some friends who were, uh, also physicians and, they said, oh, we recommend this ophthalmologist. So this ophthalmologist, uh, you know, did some scans and um, they they noticed that she had like an 
exudate formation and some like retinopathy. And they diagnosed it preliminarily as something called Coates disease. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's C O A T S. And um, I guess it is like a type of retinal kind of degeneration. Hmm. And um, she previously mentioned to me, um, which she didn't mention before, that in her early 20s, she had a, a loss of vision. And, you know, she, the doctors couldn't really explain it. And she's had, you know, head and, um, CT scans and, you know, those were all negative and her vision just kind of spontaneously came back after a week or two, um, after having a major loss of vision in one eye. So she was kind of scared. They they said that we could do laser surgery, but at the time, um, and also start with these, these drugs to kind of reduce the, um, the swelling. So she started with the medication and her, her vision slightly improved. And then she ended up like opting to go to the Cleveland Clinic to a specialist who actually specialized in Coates disease because this doctor, you know, he looked it up. He was unsure whether it was Coates disease. He said mostly it affects males in her in her uh, 20s. So he just said, you know, if I had to go to someone, I would go to this doctor in Cleveland Clinic. Hmm. Um, she ended up going to the doctor in Cleveland Clinic. They ended up doing laser surgery. Her right eye um, had similar kind of retinal issues, but um, a lot of the exudate had moved right to like the center of her retina. And interestingly enough, like after the first laser surgery, she said it was probably about maybe 50 to 60% improved, but she still had distortion. And that's how she kind of measures it now. In the meantime, her headaches had gone away after the, after the, um, the laser surgery. But the most interesting part, and I thought, you know, all the stuff we talk about perception and how accommodating the central nervous system is. And again, she also got her master's. She got like a dual master's from um, McMaster University in, um, or no, a dual bachelor's, I should say. She studied uh, some kind of background in vision or I don't exactly know what her degree was. I know her her, her um, thesis or or project main research project had something to do with rats and vision. So she knows a lot about the eye. (laughs) And she noticed when she was walking with her husband and uh, he was probably about 10 feet away from her in front that when he was directly in the center of her vision, his head would disappear. Huh? Like that was the exact part of her, her left retina that had exudate on it and and did not have vision but since her right eye had um no deficits it was filling in where the blank space on the left left was so she could see road and her 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 nervous system knew enough to kind of replace that blank space with road but when something actually other than road filled in that space like when he would walk across her vision so many feet ahead he would have no head it was just road huh that's wild. That's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, maybe she was. It's like it's like the game when you you and you like wink and you take your fingers and you squish the person's head. Right. <laughs> right. So I mean, I just thought this was an interesting case again because it seems to be like cervicogenic, but I mean, yes. was her neck pain only as a result of you know her somehow straining? Um, the doctor actually in Cleveland clinic also said that, you know, if we had looked at this earlier or if, um, you know, you had had your vision checked regularly, like everyone is supposed to in their early forties, we might've caught it earlier, but I mean, they, they caught it early enough and they, she had a couple laser surgeries and a couple injections, which also, um, the crazy thing is, uh, initially when she told me she had an eye injection, I thought that it was like for some reason with her eye closed, but no, that she said there's like an eye speculum and literally they, they, they inject, like you just see the needle coming slowly towards your eye as they hold your eye open with a speculum. That sounds terrible. It does sound terrible. Yeah. I was actually like, almost, I like feel like I had to swallow my own vomit as she was telling me that story. So I guess, um, the, the main thing that I learned is that everyone in their forties uh, is supposed to have their vision checked, even if they had perfect vision, because things like this can happen. And you don't think of things like that, you know, unless you regularly go to the doctor or you regularly wear glasses. No, I'm going to go get my 
I haven't been to the eye doctor. I have glasses for a distance, mostly like at night, but I have not been to the eye doctor in a while. And now in my early 40s, I should now, – now I'm going to go. Yeah, I thought the same thing too. And even also when I, when I even check, I've had perfect vision all my life. And um, an eye doctor told me when I was a kid, my mother brought me to an eye doctor. He said, you're never going to need to go to one of us again because you have better than the perfect vision. And that's pretty much what's stuck in my head. But he was wrong. Oh, no I mean, kidding. it doesn't hurt to check it out, right? Absolutely not. I, yeah. I'll, I will say interesting because I treat I treat uh, people with concussions, um, and uh, you know one of the most common symptoms of of concussion is headache. But you can get a headache. You know, a lot of times patients have several different types of headaches that can come from obviously from the neck, um, sometimes from a direct blow from the head, can be from the jaw. But a lot of it comes from their headaches come from the eyes and visual and processing of visual information. Um, and so that's very interesting. And we don't, you know, just because someone comes to you with a headache, even if they've had a no recent episode of any kind of trauma, post concussion symptoms can last for years uh, and can be missed a lot, especially if they don't seem to be resolved with your traditional cervical interventions. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's immediately what we think, right? We're PTs, we think cervical spine, TMJ. And yes. then when all of a sudden it's not, I'm like, you better go see someone else and you know get a head scan or something else. But yeah, I I, I never really thought vision. Uh, I did. I was aware of that for post concussion post concussion syndrome, but I know I just know enough of that that I shouldn't be treating it. Yeah, that well, I'm not. You know, especially after looking at Molly Parker, who's also been on Untold Physio Stories and um, and having Jess Schwartz on uh, my yeah. old podcast Therapy Insiders, I just thought, well, now I know enough about this that I know that I'm not an expert in it. Yeah. Uh, but it's also good that you can I- identify that when things aren't responding as expected, not to just keep on, keep going to now then refer to someone else, say, look, this is not responding as I would hope in this given time. Let's now get someone else to get a, a look at things. For sure. I think that's one of um, many clinicians' biggest mistakes is just kind of hoping that the stuff they normally do is going to start working. But really, if if your best effort isn't uh, for whatever you're doing and different treatments aren't having any effect within four to six visits, it's probably time to refer out because, you know, what I always tell people, like, what are you saving your best treatment for visit 10? Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Andrew, well, where can people find you? Well, Urson, you're going to be shocked to hear this, but people can find me on Instagram and Twitter now at A Rothschild PT. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> This guy is the most indecisive brand <laughs> ever. I, I don't know. Twenty twenty, we're, we're changing it up. Yeah, I don't know if I'm shocked or not. I think I would have been more shocked if it was actually completely different. And you actually said, "I'm legally changing my name oh. to Speaker Underscore Physio." I mean, <laughs> if you actually gave up Andrew and you actually legally became Spear Underscore Physio, that um, would be a 2020 I, 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 thing to do. But I didn't go that far. Right. Next time, maybe. Maybe. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know your email and I know it's, uh, you know, it has, is your name in it. It it's is. not Spear yet. So that's right. Well, that's good because I haven't made your website yet. It's true. It's true. I should hold out until then. <laughs> well, we should just get both domains just to be safe. We'll both go to the same, <laughs> we'll go to the same, same website. Location. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a great Thanksgiving and, uh, you too. All right. Have a good day. Bye. Well, you can find me, uh, Dr. E, at Modern Rehab Mastery. That's our new online mentoring program. It includes modern manual therapy, modern patient education, and modern strength training. It's three months with three mentors. So one month with each mentor, four weeks, tons of modules, lots of CEUs, learn at your own pace for a month, then move on. Um, So go beyond the seminar. You also get chat room um, with your mentees and mentors and live Q&As every week. Check out all my products, Edge Mobility System. We have the new Edge ISTM toolbox that includes the Edge Mobility Star and the OG Edge Mobility Tool, our Edge Restriction System BFR cuffs. That's part of Dr. Kyle Coffey's Modern Strike Training BFR certificate. Uh, I hope to see you at a live eclectic approach course soon. That's Modern Manual Therapy. Um, in U.S., Canada, and South America. And uh, make sure to rate Untold Physio Stories five stars on Apple Podcasts. You could also subscribe on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And as always, you guys have an awesome day.